Hey team, I'm going to record a end-to-end -end demo showing what our MCP server can do with the context that's currently on this board. So this is a board which has a PRD for an API status dashboard. So nothing super fancy, but just a way to keep uh, monitoring our APIs and ensuring our um, product and our our APIs are healthy. So here is our PRD. And then we also have a system architecture document as well has an architecture diagram and mermaid syntax. And I also have another uh, actual diagram here. So let's go ahead and see it in action. So I already have my MCP server set up within cursor. So I can say, uh, get all boards you have access to in Miro. So within a couple seconds, it should call this list boards tool. And then with that, it should give me that MCP demo dashboard. There you go, great. So now I'm gonna go ahead and prompt it to start developing the app and we'll see how it does. So here is the prompt. I'm not gonna bore you with this typing. I'm not the best typer anyways, so you don't wanna see that. So it's gonna use the context analyze tool to take the context from the board. It's gonna use this board ID and create a basic app, which should be broken, running locally on Node.js. And if the get context tool doesn't give you enough context, use the get items tool instead. So that's it. Let's see how it does. Let's go ahead and see how it does with this prompt. So it's going to start by doing a to do list. So it's going to probably um, get detailed items on the board if context is insufficient. And then it's going to use it, create a node.js application, create package.json, and we should see the files popping up here in just a second. So it's calling a uh, get context based on this board ID, which I passed in. So let's see how it does. And then if it gets slow, I'm going to cut out a little bit of the video. So you're not super bored, um, but we'll see how it does here. So project summary, that looks good. So it's able to access the document and see what it, the requirements are. You can see that there's uh, functional requirements, uh, things like that up there. Now it's calling get items to see also uh, if, if it missed something. So you can see the HTML from the product requirements document uh, that it was able to get. And then this is uh, most more than likely all the positioning of the things within the diagram widget. Um, cool, so we can see that now it's able to get the product requirements, it's able to get the architecture, it's able to get the features, and now we should be able to see that it's starting to uh, create the app. We can see the package.json, the public, which is just the HTML or the um, uh, front end, and then of course the server.js file, etc. So I'm just going to auto approve all of these to see how it does uh, in the first round. And then once it's ready, I'm going to go ahead and go into that API dashboard and I'm going to do npm install and then npm run start and that should give us the app. Um, but yeah, this is a very basic app. I think if we want to go even deeper, you know, maybe two way sync apps, uh, integrations, things like that, that'll maybe take a little bit more. Um, architecture diagrams and deeper specifications, but for something like this, um, it should be it should do pretty well. So let's see how it does. It's creating the app.js file now. Cool, it created that and also added the CSS. Now it's creating the readme. That's kind of the final uh, final little bit. We probably don't even need to wait. So let's try npm i because the readme is not really that important. npm uh, run start. Cool, it's running on localhost 3000, and here is our API status dashboard. We have eight total services. We can see one is offline, one is online. The database is looking good. So it's just a really nice way to quickly get an MCP um, up and running, a, sorry, a POC using uh, our MCP up and running. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.